Greetings from Black Video News. I am Professor Frederick Williams with the Writer Fred Discussion Group. I'd like to introduce the guests I have with me here today. To my far right, I have Brother Greg X from the Nation of Islam. Brother Thank Greg, you, welcome. Thank you. Sitting next to me here, I have the lovely Gigi Hughes, publisher and CEO of San Antonio Herald newspaper. Thank you. And to my left, always my friend, businessman, community activist, Mr. William B. Johnson. Welcome to discussion with the writer Fred. Today we're going to talk about the Million Man March since just last week there was a celebration of the 22nd anniversary of that march. October 16th, 1995, approximately 850,000 black men got together in the nation's capital and made a pledge to help to increase the value and the beauty of the black community. Specifically, they pledged to be better fathers, uh, increase the educational level of our kids, do something to fight crime. 22 years later, they get together and they celebrate the celebration. And I found that quite interesting and that's why I decided I want to do this uh, particular uh, panel with the discussions on why are we celebrating the celebration and not celebrating what we've done, what we've accomplished in terms of uh, improving on the black community since those days? So with no further ado, I'm gonna get right to my questioning and I'm gonna start with my good friend. I mean, he is my good friend. He is a brother, I mean, really, really, uh, a really good brother who's taken a lot of time in our communities and that's uh, Brother Greg X. Yes, sir. Brother Greg. All the participants at the 1995 Million March took a public pledge to support their families, refrain from violence and physical and verbal abuse towards women and children, and renounce violence against other men except in self-defense. They also pledged abstinence from drugs or alcohol and to concentrate their efforts on building black businesses and social and cultural institutions in the communities where we live. After 22 years, Brother Greg, of taking this pledge that all of us should have taken, even if we weren't there. True. And I want to make quite clear, I am a black man. I'm, yes, not, I'm not standing outside that 850,000. Yes, sir. I'm definitely a part of the 850,000, without a doubt. Brother Greg, how successful have we been as black men in living up to these pledges? Well, Brother Fred, uh, not necessarily correcting you, but actually there was 1.8 million on the mall that morning. And going forward, I think that what happened in 1995 to the present, there have been great accomplishments. And when you gave me the question, I thought about two brothers that I personally know right here in San Antonio, and I'm gonna share their story because you know them as well. well the first brother I'm gonna talk about is Dr. Martin Diop. Dr. Martin Diop, when I first met him 22 years ago, he just had got out the Air Force. Going to school, and he accomplished getting his BA and then he went into education. Four years later, the brother got his master's degree. That was after the Million Man March. Then four years later, he comes up and now he is known as Dr. Martin Dia. He held positions here in San Antonio with the San Antonio Penn School District as assistant superintendent of technology. And now he's the principal over at Sam Houston High School, mm -hmm. a school that they were going to close a year ago. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to talk about we call him Lefty, which his last name is Hammond, and they're brothers, actually. Lefty is a professional electrician. He has raised several kids in his family and those around him. He's been acting as a father, mentor, and took some up under the, their wings, and they have got their apprenticeship in electricity. Uh, I just seen Lefty on yesterday uh, at the Fair Contracting Coalition here in San Antonio, OS Sauls. Lefty has been awarded all 53 fire department stations to rewire them. Oh. And that is an accomplishment because he, the dedication that he's examined out of uh, fire station number 18 on uh, WW White Road and Rice Road, he had the initial contract to wire that facility. Yeah. Then we get down to myself. I know that there are other brothers that took the same road that I did. I came back. I ended up taking in one of my wife's little cousins at that time. She was a sophomore at Sam Houston. Mm -hmm. 
and we raised her. I have three children of my own. I have two daughters of my own. Anytime they went and got their hair done, she got her hair done. Okay. Yeah. Anytime my children went and did anything, she went with them, or if she wanted to go with her friends, we did. And we did not get any federal substance from anybody, nor did I get really any help from her own mother and father. Uh, personally, uh, once again, as we go back and look at what happened, and I'm going to share something that most of us uh, leading up to this event, how difficult it was because if we got 48 states, today we stand at about a population of a little bit over 50 million black people in America. So when you're talking about 1.8 million people, black men showing up, if you break the numbers down, that's less than half of a percent of the total black population. Right. Mm -hmm. So when we don't, we didn't necessarily run the data to see or track, but some of the numbers that came out of it, black men registered to vote it after 1995, that number was somewhere between 1.7 million new voters. Then the minister at that same time, because he was questioned the night before, and this is something that most don't know, he was in the room with some of, of our elite pastors. And the question came up, Brother Minister, what are you going to ask the brothers to do tomorrow? Will you ask them to join the Nation of Islam? He said no. He's going to ask every brother to go back to their home and join on to whatever organization they belong to to make it better because there is no perfect organization that exists in the world. Then he asked them to go back and work in their communities to help stem raising and showing positive black influence over children. Uh, I can say that my younger brother, he just turned 37, at that particular time, that's what he did, and he's a, a, a education in the educational system as well. But they do Pop Warner football, been doing it for the last 12 years. And at the same time, I think that when we look at what exactly what happened that day, there was not one crime committed in Washington, D.C. There was not one brother that struck or said anything negatively to a brother. We left Washington, D.C. cleaner than we came to it. And uh, 3.30 in the morning when we started convening, there was a young man at the footsteps of the Capitol. And he had his jacket thrown over his shoulder. Dr. Leo Edwards and uh, Wayman Griffin, they had press passes with Pastor Jennings. So they took some pictures. Well, that young man that morning at 3.30 in the morning, we did not know his name but he became the 44th president of the United States of America. That was a Barack Obama. Yeah. So the range of what we're trying to uh, pinpoint is a little impossible because I don't know every person that went there. Mm -hmm. Dr. Morris Stribling came back to San Antonio and started the Black Expo. It was very successful for many years, but it's no longer here. There are some great uh, positive incidents that came out. Thank you very much, Brother Well, no, Go ahead. Okay. Finish and, your thought. And uh, also, the Dr. Leo Edwards also started, uh, along with Tom Joyner, Bring a Brother to the Doctor. All that stemmed out of the Million Man March. Thank okay. you, sir. Okay. Great. Great. We'll come back okay. to you. Okay. You. Brother Johnson, mm -hmm. the Million Man March took place in the context of a larger grassroots movement that set out to win politicians' attention to urban and minority issues through widespread voter registration, something I know you're very much involved in campaigns. Mm -hmm. Again, the question is how successful have black men been at capturing the attention of both national, state, and local politicians to the problems confronting our communities, and how successful mm -hmm. have they been in registering black men and women mm -hmm. to vote? Uh, not as successful as, w as we would have liked. Uh, that's a, uh, a quite a job to do what the question suggests. But it's my opinion that the main focus on that day in 1995 was on us as brothers atoning for our weaknesses and our shortcomings that, uh, that we needed to atone for. That's very, very important and also to uh, reclaim uh, our positions as black men, uh, acting as men for our families. So I believe that's where the main focus was. And to me, uh, if a man can feel that he is in fact 
you know, the man, the head, and he feels uh, the self-love that the minister and others uh, shared in their messages that day. You know, we don't know that so well in America as black men because we haven't really experienced that. But if we like our blackness, love ourselves, then we can, in fact, uh, change the world, if you will. Not literally, but we can get people to vote. Our families will move forward in uh, many, many, many ways, including those that you've mentioned. But I think as long as we're half-stepping, trying to survive in America, not sure of who we are and whose we are, then uh, this racing people to vote, you can do that day and night. We as a people will not really move forward and make the progress that I believe we really should be making. Uh, so, so that's basically it. But of course, there's been uh, black folk elected here and there. And, and there's been others who've been uh, uh, moderates, if you will, who's been concerned, uh, appear to be concerned about our issues. But politicians tend to be politicians. They tend to just run to be elected the next time around. But we as the people have got to start just looking out for ourselves, our own best interests. And to me, it starts with self-love. It starts with the brotherhood that I felt on that day. Strange brothers, you know, that I hadn't seen. Black men embracing one another, saying hello, being friendly. With that, imagine if half of us were that way, what progress we could make. Exactly. So, so that's really the way I'm seeing that, is that uh, we, we, you know, the race and the vote and the politician, the count that we had 50 as a result. I, I don't think we can do it that way, but we can hope that those of us who did attend and the message we've shared with others uh, can encourage us to act like men and become more brotherly and sisterly one with the other. Okay, very good. Thank you. Ms. Hughes. Two years after the march, the Million Woman March was held in response to fears that the Million Man March had focused only on men to the exclusion of the black woman. Do you believe that was a mistake on the part of the planners of the Million Man March and they should have included our beautiful sisters? No, I do not feel it was a mistake that they had just the Million Men's March. Men need needed to go back to that accountability and transparency that they were trying to connect with within their communities. If we're going to let them lead, let them lead. We were waiting for men to come back in the community and we'll, we'll start working together as a union, as a united force. We didn't see that though. Because what happened, if you remember in 1994, was when they passed the first three strikes you're out program. Mm -hmm. And right. then after the march, they passed the mandatory minimums. So our, our communities and neighborhoods found themselves in so much chaos and, and disruption, we couldn't come together as a unified force to get things done that we needed done to continue the, the unity that was felt in the men's march. So women just stood on the outside, but if that was, that was not a mistake that they didn't include women. Okay. We wanted them to take more of a leadership role, but unfortunately, because of systematic racism, they weren't allowed to do so. Okay, let me stick with you for a second, okay? Okay. Did the men do that? I think they came back in certain areas. We just were not, our communication forces were cut off at that point. If you can remember, our black radio was gone, our uh, black yeah, newspapers, yes. even, no, all over the country when, the, uh, Percy Sutton shut down the 98 radio stations. We didn't have that mass force that we had back in the 70s and, and mid 80s and 60s. We didn't have that anymore. Okay, let's stick with this just for a second. And I am here to play the gadfly. Okay, right. okay. if you don't mind. Okay. okay. Our, the, the, uh, rate, the birth rate of unmarried women is like 73%. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that two people have to get married as, as best as they do, but to me the problem is the fathers aren't there. The fathers aren't there. So if you just look at the birth rate, at uh, out of marriage birth weight is 73%, and you add that to what Brother Johnson said here, that we don't love each other. Mm, okay. We don't love each other. If, if, you could, if you could look at another brother and I and say, 
excuse my language, nigga, I'll blow your brains out. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. There's a lack of love yeah. there. Yeah. There's a lack of love there. And let's be real, folks. Mm. That was some of the things that we were sto supposed to deal with mm -hmm. at that march. And so I come back to uh, Ms. Hughes when, when you said, okay, let the men do it. Let them come back and be the fathers, be the leaders in the home if necessary. Uh, excuse me, my wife. I know you're the leader. <laughs> but anyway. That's a good one. That's a good one. Did, is that happening? Now let's be real up here. Let's be real on this show, okay? okay. All right. Is that happening? No, it's not happening. Because, like I said, if you look at what the chaos that was occurring, um, that was the, tossed into the black community at that time, you went to the highest mass incarceration rate in the country. Uh, at that time. So if you're incarcerating, distracting, removing men out of the community, how can they lead the community? Oh, okay, let's, uh, can I just yeah. hitchhike on that just for sure. one second, I'll get right to you. And I hear this about the mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. All our black kids are going to prison. Are all these black kids innocent? No, they're not innocent, but when you strip those communities of jobs, when you pass NAFTA and you take jobs out of the community and you show them the rappers on television with the Bentleys and the gold, and they're going to want to emulate some of that because that's the only thing that they're seeing in their right. community. Yeah. So they're going to want to imitate those things okay. instead of the positive things. Okay. So that, that's basically what okay, happened. Okay, fine. As, 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 as I understand it, Professor, at the march, was not designed to solve every problem that black people had encountered or accumulated or will ever encounter okay. in our journey in America. I think we may have put too many eggs in that one basket. Mm -hmm. We were hopeful, and I think we did a great job, but it was not designed to really do that, considering everything else that was working against us in America. Uh, as mm -hmm. far as the stats that reflect negatively upon black people, we're not perfect, far from it. And I suspect that if any other people here, be they Italian, Irish, or Jewish, or whomever, had, uh, had the road to hold, if you will, that we've had in America, they would be in the same category, in the same situation. But uh, they were white, and they were accepted uh, simply because of that in many, many cases. So uh, our, our negative uh, numbers uh, or not to be something that we should feel, of course we should try to improve and do better. You bet, yeah, yeah, you bet. Yeah. No doubt. But uh, you know, there's just so much operating against us from the top to the bottom, and now it's not getting any better with the Attorney General we have, the President and his staff and others who have an awesome lot of power. Much is happening that we aren't aware of. Signing. Uh, edicts here and there that's changing and upsetting things in this governor and this po political system, it's, it's all working against us and we're not voting, probably out of frustration in some cases, and that's unfortunate. But uh, people aren't voting because sometimes they just feel like it uh, may or may not do the trick. Secondly, we register a lot of people, and if 10% of them actually vote, the registration is not the answer. So the answer is going to be, perhaps, unfortunately, something catastrophic is going to have to happen yep. to us in order for us to respond. We tend to respond to a crisis, yeah. and that's unfortunate. Unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. We react. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Brother Greg, let me turn it back to you. Yes, sir. Unless you want to respond. Yeah, I just want to respond yeah, on absolutely. one thing, on one note. As uh, Going back to what Gigi was saying, well, I'm going to name two movies that really depicted black people in America. Uh, Menace to Society. Mm -hmm that showed the unlove of one another because anytime you can shoot down your brother yeah. and kill or shoot into a home yeah. and miss and kill a child in that home, yeah. Yeah. there's no love there. Right. Then they had boys in the hood at the yeah. same time. Yeah. So what we do is those movies depict us all across the world mm -hmm. and gave us an identity that really is not us. See, we, we learned from our oppressor how to be other than ourselves. Okay. And anything that we do in the Nation of Islam and talk about is a reflection of knowing yourself okay. and give up the way of this white man. That's why the minister said last Sunday, separation of death. 
And the separation has been in the Declaration because we named all four or five presidents, Lincoln, uh, Washington, uh, Grant, and some others. They wrote this in the Constitution, man, that we should be a, a separate entity but we are just like the children of old Israel that we solely believe that Moses of 4,000 years ago are leading the people out. And this is how we do, Brother Johnson. We will get to a point where there's a little difficulty. Then we'll turn around to whoever's leading us and say, man, we had it better back with Pharaoh. See, we have the same identity. So it's mental that we are suffering from what we do suffer from because money is not my and your problem. We spend $1.7 trillion a year. That's more than, there's 192 complex countries in the world. So if we were ranked 16th, that means that we would have some money that looked like us. Mm -hmm. But we don't own a blade of grass. And that's why our children that came out, because I'm on that borderline of uh, segregation, I'm 55 now. So I remember my father saying this, that integration was no more than a hypocritical ploy. So when you give up your mm -hmm. economics, and join on to this Caucasian's economics, mm -hmm. then you have nothing. Mm -hmm. Because EEOC to this day have not changed the law of the land that you can have 300 other to one black man or black woman. Okay. So right. how can you ever be equal, brother? Mm -hmm. You're not gonna be equal. Absolutely. Yes. I Absolutely. address some of the voting. The voting issue to me, we've been voting Democrat since 1965 uh -oh. under Lyndon Johnson. Mm -hmm. Over, since 1965, we've actually regressed. We've actually gotten worse. Our neighborhoods are just as, just as bad. Our job situations are just as bad. So we keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So um, I'll let everybody else finish that. <laughs> OK, we'll come back to that. I want to get over to Brother yeah. Greg. Yes, sir. Earlier you mentioned that these ministers came to uh, Mr. Farrakhan's room. And yes. The first thing on their mind, are you going to convert people to the nation of Islam? Isn't that part of the problem? Because that shouldn't have even been the issue. That's, that's true, Brother Fred. And, and there were some prompt brothers and sisters also in that room. And I'm not going to go into name calling. But at the same time, when the minister let us know that some of the questions that was asked, and this is the question, Brother Minister, are you going to ask every brother out on the mall to join the Nation of Islam? Now, mind you, that this brother went on a 14-month working tour. I believe that he had a right to ask everybody, personally. But the minister has a heart that uh, most of us don't know about, don't want to give him credit for, because any other man that had done that type of work would have done just that. He said, no, I'm not going to ask one brother to join the Nation of Islam. I'm going to ask them to go back and join on to where they left. Yes, sir. I, I see nothing wrong with that. I agree. Because that would still be, as an individual, that would be my choice. Sure, sure. sure. How, how many times do you go to, um, all the time Baptist preachers are trying to bring people in to yes, the Baptist sir. church, aren't they? Right. Yes, sir. Right. They, they always have it in the service, come join, come yeah, join. Right. Methodists do the same thing. Yeah, right. yeah. So why all of a sudden are they putting this emphasis on, on, on Brother Farrakhan's doing the same with his belief? Yeah. And that hit me when you said that. I yes, knew sir. I had to come back to that because I think that's one of the major problems. Yes, it's, fear. it's fearful, number one. And uh, at that particular time, um, there was a gentleman, I'm not going to call his name, that uh, when we first met back in 1994, he was with the minister. Then we didn't see him no more until the night of the march. And he came in the minister's room and asked him, could he speak? And the minister said, yes, sir, you can. He said, well, how long do I have? He said, brother, I can't put a time limit on you because you've been in the struggle for 40 years or more. Now, you should know who I'm talking about because that is Reverend Jesse Jackson. And the minister did not put a time limit on him, but he showed up the night of. Yes. And the minister let him speak. And the brother almost spoke 45 minutes. Yes, indeed. But if you can remember that before, he, before the march, and I know you remember this, uh, our president at the time came out and denounced yes. everybody to participate, to come, to share, to, anything to do with that march. He denounced it across the nation. Wait, 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 wait. Clinton. You, 
Clinton denounced yes. the yes. march? Yes, yes. Well, he left and her. that's why, well, yes. What, what he said, as I understand it, uh, he, he denounced, he, he felt, he, he stated something to the fact that the march uh, can be uh, uh, beneficial, but uh, Farrakhan is a person that he had the problem with. So he denounced Farrakhan right. as the leader. And, and I think that's something that we got to get beyond as a people, because my minister at the time uh, told me not to go. He felt similarly. Right. And this is a black minister, black church, of yes. course. But uh, being a free thinker, uh, I, I chose to go anyway. I said, I want to be there. Right. So I did, in fact, go, and I'm delighted that I did. So, you know, we as a people really got to uh, look beyond this denomination and the rest of this nonsense Label. that we have been taught, you know, by, uh, by those who don't have our best interests right. uh, in mind. Uh, the, the phrase that comes to mind is, uh, when your house is on fire, it shouldn't matter who brings the water. Well, Farrakhan exactly. brought the water on that yes, day, mm -hmm. and I'm delighted that I was there to get a little sprinkle on me. Yes, sir. And, and the culture, see, see, my push all the time is that the culture doesn't belong to the Baptists or the Methodists. Mm -hmm. The culture belongs to all of us. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And that the nation is definitely a part of our culture. Absolutely. I mean, people get mad at me because I say that I, I know we don't like Ben Carson. But Ben Carson is part of our culture. Yes, he he grew up in the projects in Detroit. Yeah. Come yeah, on. That's what I said. Okay. Yeah. Yes, the same with the guy that. Clarence Thomas. Clarence Thomas. He yeah. grew up in Georgia. Yeah. The, they, they are part of the culture. Yes, no one group can claim exclusivity no. to our culture. Okay. And I think a lot of times we have some people that do that. And that's right. why I, I don't want to keep harping on this. That's why mm -hmm. I came back because when you said that, I said, how dare them? Yes, sir. Yes, think sir. that they have some kind of exclusive rights mm -hmm. to what mm -hmm. someone uh, should believe. Yes, sir. So I anyone else want to chime in here? Please feel free. Well, you know, I I'll just always believe, you know, until my time is up, that this was just one of the most heartfelt events mm -hmm. that I've ever been a part of. I attended the uh, March in 1983 to commemorate the 1963 King March, right, right. where 250,000 people. I rode the bus along with many others from San Antonio to Washington, D.C. to do that. But there was really no, no comparison, you know, just a heartfelt brotherliness among all black, that number of black men, strangers, if you will, was something that I hadn't experienced. That's right. new to us. Mm -hmm. and, and just to experience that one time makes for a lifelong memory. But I think that's all good. But we have to get to the point where that's done all the time. Yes, Absolutely. Just Absolutely. not on a special Absolutely. occasion. Absolutely. That's the goal. Yeah. 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 That we do it. Yeah. 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 And so, I think we're yeah. going to look back in 20 or 30 years, and it's going to be one of the great issues of our time, one of the great achievements of our time. Yeah, sure. but, was, yeah, it, I'm uh, pretty sure of it. Just, but let's, let's realize that 75 years from now, when there'll be another panel up here, we'll be gone. Right. Yeah. But there'll be some more brothers sure. and sisters. Sure. Say, Let's evaluate what came out of that march. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're not going to look at the fact that uh, a million brothers got together, didn't yeah. step on each other's shoes. Right. I understand. I understand. They're going to say what came out of it. And I think yeah, that's, that's what we have to look at. What came out of it? Uh, we can pat each other on the back all day long for coming together. Yeah. But if that's all that happened, that has very little effect and what's happening in our community. Well, the, the, the knowledge that it's possible, Fred, that we can yeah. do it, it's possible. Just that knowledge that it's possible yeah, it because it happened. That's meaningful, and that might bear fruit in ways that we can't see at the moment or don't realize at because the moment. Because mainstream media was so harsh against, against it. The they police. talked against it morning, noon, and right. night. It was never going to happen. That was impossible. That's all you heard every day. And when it happened, everybody was so mesmerized. Yeah and shot, but delighted. Yes, mm -hmm. and it, it reminds me of uh, after the Sunday night game on the NFL, okay. and then Monday morning you wake up and critique the quarterback. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the effect of the Million Man yeah, March, yeah, yeah, because yeah. we had so many uh, opposition, and opposition was great, yeah, yeah. that some of us never thought it would go off. But when it did, because I knew some brothers that did not go to the march here, okay. and when we came back and had our first Saturday meeting, okay. it was standing room only. Yeah, and we had cheerleaders in there, brother Fred, because they were the mon Monday morning quarterback. And they were just on the opposite side of history. Okay, I would respond, but we're running yes, out of time, sir. so I want to give everyone a minute to wrap up. 
Start with you, Brother Greg. Uh, well, th Brother Fred, I'd like to say thank you for inviting me to the show, and I think we probably need do, to do part two, three, and four. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. And thank you very much. Thank you for having me as a guest on the show, okay. and I look forward to working with you on other shows. And okay. thanks to BBN, I'm, I'm very impressed. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Fred, again, for having me on to share my thoughts uh, with the audience. I appreciate it very much, and I'm looking forward to other shows that you'll be having as time okay. moves on. Okay. Well, I want to thank you all for yes, being my guest, and of course, thanks to Black Video News for yes. giving us this opportunity to explore these kind of issues, mm -hmm. and you can rest assured, two weeks from now, we'll have another one, another issue important to the African-American community. Very good. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right.